Hey everybody, welcome back to a brand new video in Maya 2020. Well, before we dive into today's video, uh, just a little reminder, we have a 3D character sculpting challenge going on in ZBrush, and I'll put a link below. You can win an awesome prize with that. Uh, closing date is July 1st, so don't miss that, right? Okay, so today's video, we're gonna be talking about photometric lights in Maya. Uh, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. It's really awesome, and it will help you to improve your game, right? Here we go. This video has been made possible by RenderHub.com, the premier site for selling and buying your 3D-related content, such as 3D models, HDRI files, sound effects, textures, print-ready models, and much, much more. Okay, guys, well, every time I do a video, I try to cover a topic that has not been done a lot, uh, just to bring you something new, and today we're gonna do exactly that. So we're going to be talking about lighting. I made up a very simple scene here, just the floor with a table and a lamp on it, uh, to talk about a photometric light. Now, you probably are aware of the default lighting. If you go up to uh, Create and you go to Lights, you got the ambient and the directional and all that, right? You probably know about those. But if you go to the Arnold tab up here and you go to Lights, you have the option here to select photometric light, right? So let's do that. Right, as we do that, you see that in our outliner, we now have an uh, Arnold photometric light created, right? So we're gonna hit W, we're gonna raise that up. And let's just uh, put that over a scene somewhere, maybe here or so, yep. And what we're simply gonna do is we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go to Arnold and we're gonna click on render. Okay, now as we do that, you see that absolutely nothing happens, which is exactly the point. Now, what is this all about? Um, there is a thing in the industry called IES, right? These are basically files that you plug into this light. And the reason for that is if you want certain light patterns to come from a light, you basically have, let's say, the default spotlight, right? But if you want to have something, let's say, looking like this, or maybe like this, right? How are you going to create that? Well, what you do is you load up uh, files called IES files that are manufactured or created by the manufacturers, right? So you can mimic a very specific light and then you can get very realistic scenes, you know, something like this, you know, or, or this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up one of these files, right? So I'm just gonna close this down and we're gonna go and make sure we got this guy selected, yeah. We're gonna control A to open up the attribute editor and we're gonna go and look for that photometric light shape tab. Now, as we do so, you see that we have the option here to plug in a file, a photometry file or photometry file, depending on how you pronounce that, right? So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna go to my desktop and I got a folder called IES and I downloaded a whole bunch of these files and they're free. And I'll put a link below where you can get these, right? So I'm gonna take this top one right here and I'm gonna take the top one of that. Yeah, let's click on load. And let's do a new render, see what happens. So we're gonna to go to Arnold, let's click render. Now you see some very faint light going on there, right? And I'm just going here, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply go in and let's increase the intensity. Let's go to three, maybe a bit more. Let's go 10, why not? Okay. Now, as we do that, you can clearly see that we have our light sitting on our table. And then you can go in here and you can tweak that, right? You can go in, you can change the color. I can go in here, let's say I want the yellow light or green light, anything like that, yeah. But we'll just go with the default white. But you can also go in here and choose a color temperature, which is much closer to what you would see in real life, right? So uh, when you select that, you go into Kelvin mode. So temperature measured in Kelvin. Now, 5,500 is kind of like daylight, right? If you go up to 6,500, then it becomes a bit cooler. And as the number goes down, it becomes more warmer, more yellow, more orange. Kind of like, uh, you know, sunset in photography. So let's do, let's say, I don't know, 4,500. And as you do that, you see that immediately that light changes to something that's a bit warmer, right? If you want to have, let's say, a sci-fi feel to it, so kind of bluish cold light, let's go with 7,000, 7, right? There you go. 
And then of course you can increase the samples to improve quality, right? You have uh, the option to change the exposure if you like. And you can see that that works quite well. And that's basically all there's to it. So it's a lot of fun to play around with these. Like I said, um, it's a simple, but it's very effective and it will give you the opportunity to create some very, very cool things. So I'll put the link below where you can get the IES files. Uh, please let me know in the comments or share links in the comments uh, how you uh, use this and uh, show an example, right? Well, that's all there's to it. Thank you so much for checking this out. If you haven't subscribed just yet, please do so. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.